buddies. We are so excited today to bring you a very special episode of When Calls the Hallmarkies. We are the Hallmarkies podcast, and we're talking about the uh, latest uh, When Calls the Heart movie, The Greatest Christmas Wish. And uh, this is going to be so much fun. I'm Rachel, and Amber's here. Good morning, everybody, or yes. afternoon, or evening, whenever you listen. That's right. <laughs> And we have a special guest today. We have Caroline Richardson, hardcore Hardy fan, is here to talk to us about it. Good morning, afternoon, evening. Yeah, thank <laughs> you so much for coming You're out welcome. talking. Thanks for asking me. Yeah, we hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. Uh, they, you, it's so great for Hardys because they not only get Christmas, but they also get their When Calls the Heart movie. It's 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 just. A multitude of blessings. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. uh, Caroline, uh, we all know that the Hardys were very traumatized by the events of last season. Yes. As a hardcore fan, how did you absorb it all? How did you feel about how they handled everything with Jack and uh, and all of that? I I was shocked at first, like. Like, he was leaving. But then, like, I, of course, I respected his decision because, like, he's an actor, so he, he can do whatever, you know, he wants to do. But I was kind of shocked about how some of the other parties, like, took it. Mm -hmm. Like, they took it as, like, a real person dying, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. And, like, it's just Dan wanted to leave, and I respect his decision. Yeah. Well, but how did you feel about as far as the plot and the finale? Uh, about, like, about how did you feel about how they handled it? I I thought it was handled good. Like I I loved the episode and how Elizabeth grieved and at the end, you know, the the baby. But mm -hmm. I I like how they handled it. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's it's uh, it, I I didn't love how they handled it. I I liked the finale actually, but just the the whole death thing i think they could have done it better but uh i uh it, it's going to be really interesting and so let's just start out of the gate amber how how did you feel about this movie and particularly how it kind of jumped off of what we got in the finale i, I think the thing that i really liked about this is that it didn't spend a lot of time grieving um, I feel like we were able to get through, like, the grieving process in that last episode of the regular season, um, and it allowed us to go forward with hope, which I think is a big emphasis in When Calls the Heart, and I think they actually did a really great job of transitioning from what the show was while still respecting, you know, the memory of Jack, bringing us, like, toward the future of what When Calls the Heart's going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. I thought they did a really nice job of... I'm not like just throwing it aside and it be nothing, you know, cause that wouldn't have been good if they were just like completely moving on. Um, but like, obviously Elizabeth still, you know, not being able to set up the room and her bringing in the picture. We'll talk about all of this, but there was enough that it was, uh, I thought very sweet and I thought they did a very good job kind of bridging that gap. Would, would you agree, Caroline? I think so. I thought it like, was handled well. Like, you could still see she she missed him, but like while excited about the baby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, would you overall say the movie was a success, Amber? Did you enjoy it or? Yeah, I really did. Um, I'm still left with some questions. Mm -hmm. As like captain of Team Henrigale, I they yes. didn't talk to each other, so I was no. disappointed. <laughs> That's true. I didn't. Think but um, the but. On all other fronts, it was I was very satisfied with what they decided to do for this Christmas episode. But to be fair, I feel like I've loved every single Christmas movie. Like they know how to do a Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, Caroline, what do you think about the movie as a whole? I, I loved it. Like I thought it was my my favorite Christmas movie of Wind Calls the Heart yet. I still yeah. love the one with like Santa and the toys best, but that's you know. Yeah. Because I'm that a, was a good one too. <laughs> I don't even remember what that one was called, but it was like the best. <laughs> yeah, I, 
I really liked this a lot. And there's a, there's a lot of things. I, I, I it has been a while since I saw that one with this, with the Santa. Uh, and I mean, like he wasn't Santa, but he was like wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that one was really good. Um, but I think there's a lot of factors that I was very high on it. Cause I'm overall, I'm, um, I would say I'm a casual fan of when calls the heart. I, uh, and so I was surprised at how much I loved it. Uh, and I think part of that is just that it did feel like a little bit, I think, more polished than some of the movies we've been getting lately. Um, and also, I, I don't know, I just, I just really responded to the themes and I just thought it was so well executed. And uh, I... I don't know. I was surprised how much I really liked it. I was like, wow, I never thought that the one calls the heart movie would end up in my top 10 countdown for Christmas, but it definitely will. So yeah, that was a surprise for me. So uh, I, 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 I had high expectations because we have liked all the Christmas movies. Then I had low expectations for some reason. And I don't know why. Uh, Maybe it's just that I wasn't thrilled about the execution of, of, uh, some of the things last season so who knows but uh but i really liked it i thought it was really really cute and really sweet and had a really nice message so let's talk about some of the elements so <laughs> right off the bat we get our kind of silly plot element of bill trying to make this pudding <laughs> the figgy pudding with no figs but <laughs> <laughs> the recipe is a date pudding, I guess. But the only thing that kind of made me laugh about all of this is uh, is that it, this would be so expensive. <laughs> all of these all of these fails that he has because like spices and stuff were very expensive back. I mean, they still are expensive back then. But I'm like, man, all these dried fruits and all this stuff. I'm like, what? Still. <laughs> but it was kind of fun i mean in the world of bill subplots uh who's caroline he's not our favorite character um he's not, not I, either he yeah <laughs> this was pretty pretty fun like have him making more pie more food i'm fine <laughs> with that <laughs> yeah i don't know have you ever had amber a pudding like that um no and i'm not like <laughs> captain pudding oh. <laughs> I mean, you know, give me a custard any day, and I'll be like, yeah, that's delicious. But like pudding, a little, and then plus that wasn't like that was like British pudding, which is like yeah. soggy bread. <laughs> I don't know. Basically, the long answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> you have to like dried fruit, and that that's I feel like that was kind of a a little bit of a thing of the past, a little bit like things like. I feel like we don't like, like they only pe- the only reason why people back then liked dry fruit was because that was all they could do. Like they didn't have, you know. Yeah, it was the, a different the food options we have. <laughs> yeah, and also since neither of us drink alcohol, and that was a big part of that kind of uh, that kind of pudding, for lack of a word, it's sort of like it, that. That was a lot of appeal of things like fruit cake and stuff like that. Is they would have them very alcohol very boozy <laughs> back in the day so anyway it's kind of funny but like i said i'd rather have bill be uh, be having cooking shenanigans than than some of the other stuff so <laughs> i mean was- i like keep bill in the cook kitchen and away from stealing orphans from their siblings <laughs> right exactly <laughs> exactly uh so <laughs> the uh so the wishing tree was still a thing as they carried over which was kind of interesting i i appreciated that i I don't know if you know this but i'm like a huge fan of continuity it's like my favorite thing in the whole world part of the reason why i like the marvel movies because they have some continuity right but um i was like yay for the wishing tree (laughs) can we get back the rest of the traditions too i hope yeah and i i feel like they put money into this uh, more so than last year special i i mean we talked about the wigs last year but it was mm-hmm. certainly better this year as far as hair makeup costumes all that stuff would you agree? i did have a question i feel like one of the like um orphan ladies what would those be called 
caretakers, maybe? Okay, yeah, sure. They, I feel like one of them was wearing the coat that Florence found the note in or something. Remember oh that? My oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The red one or? The, the like, sort of, yeah, like red salmon-y coat. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like that happened. Am I crazy? Maybe. Well, at, at me in the oh, comments, no. people. Tell me if that's the same <laughs> coat. That is a poll. If that's true, <laughs> you are a genius. Wow. Very good. I believe it. <laughs> that's funny. They probably I'll have to watch it again to see. Yeah, they're probably like, nobody will ever recognize the coat from like three <laughs> seasons ago. <laughs> that's really funny. Very good. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> yeah, so they're doing this big feast. The whole town is there for the feast. And it's kind of like a potluck. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a potluck except for Abigail's like in charge of making sure everyone brings things. And yeah. I just want to be Abigail, chill out. It's fine if there is like beef stew. Right? I like yeah. beef stew. Like, yeah. As long as people get enough food to eat, that's the only thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and she she she's going to make this roast. But uh I mean, it was pretty small and there were many tables. So I I I, I get it that's a potluck but I, I, like, I feel like her concern is is uh she's a little overly concerned about this uh, about this uh roast <laughs> but um but yeah so this was, was quite the the feast I mean I wanted to go to that party that looked fun yeah you look beautiful <laughs> and yes uh Andrea Brooks did a great job decorating oh yeah <laughs> the truth <laughs> yeah yeah she learned from uh, carson actually did the decorating (laughs) she learned from uh carson's party (laughs) oh yeah i forgot about carson she did play in she did play in it yeah we we all forgot after it was rudely interrupted by the mountie on the horse oh gosh Uh, (laughs) um yeah so then we get these sisters lillian and grace and the orphan with the all these orphans they were eight seven something like that uh, orphans and their their wagon has broken and uh were you immediately either did you warm up to them immediately or were you kind of suspicious of them what do you think caroline i the, i don't know at first i was kind of like iffy about why they came to hope valley but the kids were super cute so that won me over i was immediately on board with the okay. orphans okay yeah and i also had no doubt that those ladies had good intentions so i was fine with them Mm -hmm. but like give me those orphans every day they're so cute please don't let them move to whereverville town i want to keep them yeah uh yeah i would be more than happy if they set up a hope valley orphanage yes a, a branch or whatever there because they were really cute they did a great job and i loved every time those kids sang they they were good child children's choir i just don't understand like i was a little confused sometimes why they were just singing i mean i'm sure it was actually just like a technique to keep them from running around and misbehaving Uh but i was a little bit like but why are they singing (laughs) that's true but it just brought it made it so it was very christmasy yeah but as like outside of being a christmas show i was like would all of those like 12 year old boys really be that into this <laughs> <laughs> that's fair that's fair that's true uh, there was something though that i, I like i figured because they were so sweet uh they were actually going to be so sweet in real life but there was there was something i was a I knew that they were hiding something, obviously, uh, and there was something about them I didn't quite 100% trust, uh, but I knew that it was all, they, that yeah, they had good intentions somehow, that, that they did a good job with that, and, uh, and so, you know, you're kind of the mystery, you're diving in to find out what, what happened, and of course, Bill is very suspicious <laughs> <laughs> of them, because did they ever explain why they truly took the scenic route? I don't think well, they did. They went to go try to get Millie, which was on the way. So that's why there was like the detour. But they didn't know she was in the 
The... Well, no, but they they went to the orphanage, which was a different orphanage. Well, yeah, but didn't he say that? Oh, you still took the uh, the scenic route in if, to get from the from where they picked it because they picked up they picked so, up her sister legally legally there. at a different place. Yeah, and so he was like, "Why did you and go from here went, to?" Yeah. And then after they picked up the sister, they went to this other place with the wicked Miss McCutcheon. <laughs> no, the sister was there in McCutcheon. No, they were no. in different orphanages. Two they different were? ones. Yeah. That was the whole thing because they had been separated. Ever since they'd been separated, she stopped talking. Oh, you're right. Sorry. You're right. I know I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> I even watched it twice and I still... I've just seen too many Christmas movies. <laughs> 38. Or- <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I get billion. yeah no you're right you didn't even just watch hallmark channel like rachel's done too many <laughs> it's true you need a christmas detox <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> i think so uh why don't you watch a bunch of halloween movies that <laughs> in january um yeah you're right you're right uh so but they they decide to go through hope valley because they think they'll be less uh they'll be able to slip through easier or the, instead of the the because they're they're trying to get to where they're to their where they're going to set up the orphanage right mm-hmm. and the diff in the other town i can't remember the name of it though yeah and didn't she say oh we took the scenic route to get there yeah because mm-hmm. they were avoiding trying yeah. to say anything yeah. about millie right right so bill is very suspicious of them from the start and he starts his little researching bill is just the worst i'm sorry he is he's like yeah these ladies with all these orphans these smell like trouble (laughs) who who does this yeah yeah i mean especially (laughs) especially if you're talking about like let let them like eat their christmas dinner like let them have their their day you know i don't know it's funny i mean i guess eventually he does like pretend oh i missed my my train but you know some of these adults in this world you need to just like take a pause bill <laughs> i don't know they just funny. wanted to be together let them be together come yeah, on for one day yeah uh, <laughs> um but uh but yeah so another plot line that we had going on of this episode they really did cram a lot into this movie they did a lot um but we had uh, jesse and clara going to the nutcracker and <laughs> the whole town finding a way to get jesse into us into a tux that i like that's that was a cute little storyline i think yeah yeah what, what do you think about that amber i loved it yeah um any m- more lee please yeah. or as rachel would say leland yeah um <laughs> and i really like jesse now and I didn't, and I think it's because he cut his hair. <laughs> I was team short hair too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I kind of forget that they're not married. It feels like they're married, uh, and so hopefully they will get married this season. Um, but, um, but yeah, it was a fun little diversion <laughs> to have you know his piecemeal uh, kind of suit, it, you know, pants from uh <laughs> one person and suit coat from another and and uh that was fun and all the other men help, trying to help that was cute yeah it was it was cute and i really liked uh clara's dress at the end it was very i mean they only showed up for just a little bit but i thought it was cool i thought it was fun and she looked pretty and that was it was just a fun little story <laughs> going to the nutcracker uh and uh i really wanted to get to the nutcracker this year uh the they have a great one here in salt lake but i just ran out of t- ran out of time watched too many christmas movies <laughs> but it is a really fun uh fun experience to get to see uh the but it sounds like they had quite it was quite the swanky affair there in uh in uh in canada and <laughs> <laughs> The world of authorities uh but um so that was cute and uh and then we get the cutest thing to ever exist little millie oh. asking henry gowan to read her, her book oh she's the cutest i uh, know i could eat her up 
<laughs> yeah, the little actress's name was Audrey Wise Alvarez, and she was adorable. Yeah. She just, if you don't love her, you're a crazy person. Yeah. And my dog's name is Millie, so I'm, I'm already on board on Team Millie. <laughs> oh, very good. Caroline, how do you feel about Henry Gallen? What's your thoughts? I, I like Henry. Like, I was Team Henry Gale. Yeah. And, uh, yes. At- I, I I just think he he needs a redemption story, so mm-hmm. why not in season six? Do you think that we'll see the orphans again? I I think so. Like I I followed some of like the child outdoors and stuff, and I thought they were in some of the earlier episodes, but I think I think we might see them. And yeah, they're doing I the spinoff. The the Cassidy. Oh, Ooh. I forgot about the spinoff. Interesting. Ooh, I forgot about the spinoff. And it's with the with the two sisters. So um, I'm guessing the spinoff that- is with the two sisters. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Look at you, Captain Knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes sense because the girl who plays um, Millie's sister, I think her name was Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Um, she was in. She's been in s- several of these movies, um, including Love Struck Cafe. That's where I'd recognize her from. So if they are going to like have a series with them, that would be fine. Would you be fine if they stole Gowan and brought him over to that other series? More Gowan. So I, I'm team. Yes. Interesting. Huh. But, but you need a character that not that he's like a true antagonist, but for a long time he has kind of been the antagonist. And I feel like Man, this show would be so milk toast. I mean, it already is a somewhat milk toast show. This would be such a like if you didn't have characters like Gowan, like. Oof. But don't forget, we want to have your boyfriend be the bad guy <laughs> in the upcoming series. Remember? Yeah, that's true. I can't I remember know. if we said Kevin McGarry or the other guy, but both of them can be <laughs> Chris Valley, Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But I doubt that he, so he would become the new villain yeah. of When Calls the Heart and Gowan would go over to the spinoff. But I want Henry and Abigail to be together. So I, I know, know, me too. It's it's a complicated thing. Yes. So both of these these women are in the spinoff, huh? Mm-hmm. Wow, I didn't realize that. Their debut uh, in the Christmas Blessing, ahead of the show's season six debut, they will be starring in a whole new project from the people who brought you the blood period drama. See, this is why we had to have Caroline on the <laughs> because I had no idea about this. This is amazing. So we definitely will get to see more Millie. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm on team happiness about this. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Thrilled. It'll be this on the great. Hallmark movies now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it will. Good thing I'm already subscribed. <laughs> me too. <laughs> too we'll put a link if, if you guys want to subscribe <laughs> look forward when's that gonna happen when's the spinoffs they haven't started filming yet so i don't know yeah interesting okay cool well good to know so but yeah when anytime the gown was reading to oh. that little girl it was so cute i mean each time that probably happened three times maybe three yeah. or four three or four yeah yeah three or four and each time was just so cute she just sat there like that little face like oh i would read to you (laughs) so oh my goodness i was just in hog heaven when she followed him into the like whatever office office. yeah and Mm -hmm. it was a scene of millie gowan and hickam yes I i said I feel like Brian Bird wrote this episode this far just for me. Like, this was made just for me. This scene was, you're welcome, Amber. Thanks for all your hard work. <laughs> you're a Hickam Hardy. I am, oh, I am. Yes. I am Team Hickam, too. I would be also fine if Hickam got his own show, The Adventures of Hickam. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, it was just so, it was just so cute. It, it was it was they did a great job so True story what i really want is for these new guys to try and woo elizabeth and then in like three seasons for it to fail and then for elizabeth and hickam to fall in love but yes. i don't think that's gonna happen but that's what yes. i want yeah yeah <laughs> we're on the same wavelength 
yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm on board. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so you also get the uh, the it, it starts with the school children, our Hope Valley children who we love. They all are putting wishes on the wishing tree, and then sweet little Cody, he oh. tells uh, you know he tells Abigail that he's you know worried about the the orphans. He wants to do something to help, and she's like, well why don't you do something to help then and so uh, you see opal <laughs> getting to know the uh the the kids and her wondering you know what could she give and so they all decide to take all their wishes down from the tree the kids and they are just instead of you know serving each other's wishes they're just going to do one collaborative wish where they make christmas great for the for the orphans so that in the uh long line of delightful one calls the heart children plot lines this was very sweet mm -hmm. yeah it was really cute and uh you know when you had opal with brownie oh. <laughs> I was like, oh no, oh, very sweet. But I mean, I felt so stupid that I hadn't didn't ask Ava about Brownie when I talked to her because I got to interview her and she was so adorable. That was but so I, cute. How did I forget? Oh, but uh, but she was, of course, Opal stole the show. She was adorable. She's always adorable. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. I'm not gonna say that I just so when they were like make sure you give away something your favorite something and i was like oh. opal and brownie i knew it the minute that elizabeth was like maybe you could give away something you really love and i was like she's gonna give away brownie <laughs> i was so upset rachel knows i yeah. i sent her a message i was like oh no not brownie <laughs> and then it happened and it was still beautiful and lovely but opal is too cute and too sweet for this world yeah because he says you need to make the wishes for the orphans come true and i was just like oh no yeah i know it was it was just so adorable there's no other word to describe it so okay so then yeah carson checks out uh millie and they she can make sounds like she laughs and there's an audible laugh and so they know that it's not that it's psychosomatic not a uh she's not a like mute i guess mm -hmm. can't talk um uh, something biological it's something psychosomatic things start to kind of unwind uh we do get also the speaking of elizabeth uh the funny scene with her getting the food at the at the general store and uh, he's like he's getting pickled eggs pickles marshmallows like <laughs> that was funny <laughs> he's like oh you can need this tonic water yeah, on the that house was, that was so funny when he that did that funny. <laughs> uh she's like you're gonna get some major heartburn for all of that <laughs> but, um yeah so you think that elizabeth is uh is <laughs> is adapting to sort of i don't know single life as well as can be expected i think yeah as well as can be expected yeah uh and so she has abigail so yeah i did like the moment when she's talking to abigail and she she says you know it's overwhelming and then abigail says soon the only thing you will be overwhelmed by is how much you love him which I don't think is probably true. I think she'll probably be overwhelmed by a lot of things, but it was a sweet moment. Yeah. But I mean, she didn't say soon and forever. It'll be only that. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I guess. Yeah. Uh, but it was cute. And she finally does admit uh, after sort of stalling people uh, a couple times, Rosemary comes over with a, with a quilt and then and uh flomo comes over i think it was uh yeah. with, with a basket of stuff she finally admits to abigail that she doesn't have the baby's room set up because she just can't deal with it and nor should she like be painting or wallpapering or stuff like that i mean as a uh, pregnant woman and anyway so then rosemary uh, and abigail and the whole team of women 
come kind of storm the house <laughs> and and make the baby room ready that was cute that was I sweet that. Yeah. it was cute they should have had a ladder for the wallpaper or yeah. <laughs> something but other than that it was perfect yeah it was really cute and it was a very sweet moment that they brought she brought in jack's picture i know that that made me get teary i'm like oh my gosh yeah yeah, it was really, it was really cute. That's why I thought they did a good job. Just with those sort of little moments. It wasn't heavy handed. It was just like a little sweet moment to to Jack and and uh, you know. And then at the end, also with her just talking to the baby and talking about about Jack, and it was cute. I, I think they did a good job with that. Because it was a tricky balance. I think they had to had to work around for this uh, for this movie to to yeah. to do uh so okay um I, I feel bad for rosemary sometimes because nobody ever wants to eat any of her food <laughs> <laughs> like it seems like leland's always like oh, i i gotta go i gotta run i gotta go to the <laughs> that is office. Just... <laughs> like you can't sit down for like 10 but minutes. isn't rosemary like a really great cook too yeah that's yeah I, that's what i think <laughs> but, at least in season two she was yeah she, she made uh i think she was even at one point said that she was trained under some kind of chef for mm -hmm. you know in new york uh and yeah she makes pancakes and nobody wants her pancakes and she finally gets the the girls and i loved when they came down in her dresses the that little was girls so cute. Yeah. and she's like oh you're you worn my christmas your christmas past present and future <laughs> That's cute. Mm. Like that. Like a good Christmas Carol reference. <laughs> uh, in my mind, calls the heart. Uh, I find out that Millie is a kind of a bonus child. They should not have Millie. And and uh, she uh, she was. They didn't mean to steal her, kidnap her, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that it was the <laughs> sister. I forget her name. Charlotte. Charlotte had stowed her on board the wagon. Did you buy this whole thing, this whole story, Amber? Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. they knew that if they stole her, they would lose the chance to have her and probably the rest of the orphans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where did she she was hiding on the wagon? Do you remember? Just somewhere. Uh, yeah, under yeah, underneath something and when they were like, just under blankets in, or something. When they were when the wagon wheel broke, that's when they found her. Yeah. So uh yeah it, it was it was interesting i mean and and then once they had her then it's like what well, what do you do next and uh so they were just trying to be as positive she, you know she says we are not lawbreakers and they had because because they had gone through all of the process to get to get millie and they had all the paperwork and the other stuff but this miss mccutcheon who ran the orphanage over uh, for millie didn't want to sign her over because she feels feels like the that she needs to teach her sign language because she doesn't speak and that's more important than having her with her sister and so i don't know what did you think about that amber i was like baloney old lady <laughs> i was so frustrated with her yeah. and also her being like no we have to go immediately yeah, yeah. I was like, you're the worst. Go away. I can't wait for them to defeat you. Oh, I disliked her so strongly. Like, I get her point about wanting to be more practical. Like, she has to teach them sign language. These ladies don't know sign language. But I don't understand why, certainly, when she's like, we have to leave before we eat dinner is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one know, christmas let them have one christmas yeah i mean the like would because she's like oh it'll be harder to leave after and i'm like in theory i i guess i can i can see that sometimes being the case that like oh if you have that it'll be harder to leave but not when literally you're like creating trauma like like taking her away like when she sees the dinner like it's there you know what i mean like it's not like it's even that morning before she's seen it like she's seen it so to to take her away at that point is literally like inflicting trauma and it was 
it's ridiculous. That, that was completely ridiculous. And there's no reason why if the whole point is, well, we have to treat these kids realistically. And so we have to get her the sign language that she needs. What is stopping these other women with her sister getting her sign language? Like, surely there's other people besides this one person. <laughs> Like, I mean, I guess I just don't understand why she couldn't be like, well, just make sure you get her sign language up there. I know. <laughs> Wherever you're going. I don't know. It, it was, it she was, was the worst. She's yeah, the she only was mean. Being in the world who knows sign language. I did not love her. Yeah, she was not my favorite. <laughs> no, she was, she was something else. I mean, I would think that most orphanage ladies i don't know what you call them headmistress i don't know what you call them i would think that most of those women would be glad to have one less mouth to feed <laughs> to be frank at that time but and to re reunite sisters i mean golly you have to be have a cold heart not to want that yeah and be like i'm taking you away from your sister on christmas <laughs> what's wrong with you uh it's like like those are the kind of people who don't have room in the inn you know <laughs> like <laughs> Abigail and Elizabeth and Rosemary go to the neighboring town. I forget the name. And Benson Hills. Yeah. Benson Hills. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. Benson Hills. Very good. And uh, the reason why is that uh, Elizabeth is going to get a stroller there. And Abigail has to get a new roast because she burned the roast. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, this is, it, was, it was totally, totally unedible. And she gets there and there's no roast. All the meat is gone. In, uh, I guess nobody has any animals to like slaughter in, in the Hope Valley. But uh, that would require them killing something and they don't do that. Yeah, I guess not. Huh? Uh, yeah, you have to get all your meat from the butchers. There's no one who has chickens or a cow or whatever. But <laughs> anywhere, a pig. But I. Uh, they they end up getting a christmas salami <laughs> that was so funny <laughs> what do you think do you think you, amber you could have a christmas salami meal i mean i don't like salami so <laughs> i don't know why making it christmas would make me more excited about that oh yeah i i like i like salami but, but i would be like a christmas pepperoni <laughs> sure let's do this <laughs> i mean salami is just basically larger pepperoni don't you think it's just yeah yeah i don't think it's, uh but um but i've i've only ever had it in thin you know very thin i've never had it like as a steak or something so this would be quite the quite the meal the <laughs> christmas salami christmas <laughs> <laughs> but i think abigail with her uh you know her mastery in the in in the kitchen could make a good christmas salami meal i guess but uh, it was funny and uh, and then uh, why was rosemary going just to help elizabeth i think we had to drive the car i think oh drive the car and they took henry gowan's car mm -hmm. yeah because it was bigger. bigger yeah yeah so uh anyway okay so then they're driving home am i the only person who was like when did henry gowan get a car I, well i was <laughs> wondering that myself like is he was totally on barely barely making by last we saw him in a big car too yeah, yeah so car. like he lost all of his money but he still maintained his assets including his car i don't know whatever i guess or maybe he gained more assets maybe it's a company car let's say this maybe it's a company <laughs> car and since he's employed by lee like it's so he can do business with the company yes. and so then that's why he has a big car and why rosalie could just take it maybe maybe i don't know i was surprised by that too i'm like oh henry gowan like henry gowan is he like is he is he re basically redeemed at this point i mean he is does it get more redeemed than reading books to children and letting pregnant women use your car and like i mean he's pretty he was pretty great this episode he's pretty great every episode <laughs> rachel <laughs> but i mean <laughs> You know what I'm saying, right? Like he is he. And they call age? him Henry. They don't call him Gowan anymore. So yeah, is he fully? Uh, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, and Jack converted? Wagner's character didn't even try to punch him in the face once this whole episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know it's gonna. It's be. true. Yeah, 
Very, very interesting. So were you surprised that they didn't have either of the new new leads at all in this? No. No. Let's save that for the thing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> just as contract stuff, it makes sense for them to not. Mm. Yeah. So and I don't think other people could handle another Mountie like right off the bat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of ease people into mm-hmm. back into Hope Valley. Yeah. So then you, so you have Elizabeth and Abigail and uh, Rosemary driving home. They hit some bumps. It, she ends up going into labor and this is very quick, fairly quick labor. This is not one of your like 48 hours in labor kind of thing. Uh, and so they are, they, they luckily, Abigail happens to know about a hunting cabin. Uh, cause they I, know, get, I wonder, I wonder how she lucky. did. What was that? I said, I wonder like how she knew about it, you know? Yeah. I but. wondered about that too. I was like, wow, Abigail knows about all the hunting In my notes, I'm like, how did she know about that? Yeah. I mean, Abigail just knows. I mean, maybe it's his mayor. She just. Yeah, that's true. Knows. She is mayor. She looked at all the property taxes for everyone in the greater <laughs> Hope Valley but it, area. But is it Hope Valley that they're in or is it still Benson Hills or whatever it's called? I'm mis- guessing it must be Hope Valley because it they got to them on horseback very quickly. That's true. Very quickly. And uh, so anyway, they find this hunting cabin and uh, yeah, it's a very quick labor, which is unusual for your first child to have a very quick labor, but every pregnancy is different. So uh, they, uh, uh, she has she has the baby and it managed they managed to get that baby clean and looking great <laughs> <laughs> with snow water yeah with snow water it was very impressive <laughs> abigail can do all things yeah i mean they even you know kept everything sterile it was it was very they did a very good job don't even need carson why yeah. do they even have carson <laughs> Abigail. I'm just going to say, 100%, the best part of the whole episode was they come in and Lee says, you did a great job or something. Yeah, that was, Lee and, was so cute with the, looking at the baby. Rosalie all. says, thank you. Elizabeth did most of the work. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, she's my favorite. <laughs> but she person. was just I love teasing. Rosemary. I don't just, think she was teasing. I don't think oh, so either. She was just te- I think she was just teasing. But she, then she said, joking. oh, you're talking about Elizabeth yeah elizabeth did most of the work <laughs> she's so funny pascal is uh the best and and yeah. rosie's so sweet these last several seasons i'm like oh, i just love her yeah me too i mean i like i i like their relationship personally even better than jack and elizabeth i know that's like blasphemy to say but i just love them they're so fun and uh yeah i think she was just teasing but who, it doesn't matter it was super cute and uh and then the baby very cute and we find out big moment it's a boy yeah. did you have any doubt that it was going to be no, a boy? not at all i'm like as soon as they said that elizabeth was pregnant i'm like boy and yeah. his name will be jack. jack did you amber have any doubt any doubt about what about whether it was going to be a boy or were you are you sure it was going to be a boy you know honestly it if it was going to be a boy, it was going to be named Jack. But they could have had a girl. I would have loved to see her with a girl, though. Like, I was kind of yeah. like, either or would have been fun, you know? Yeah, I mean, I if it had been a girl, it would have been fun, and they probably would have called her, like... Jacqueline or something? Yeah. And it would have been fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't have hated that one bit. I mean, and just... Uh, yeah, I don't think I had any real preference on I would which have, kind of baby or a real thought about what kind of baby it would be. If Jack was st- going to still be on the show and stuff, I would have loved to see Jack with a girl more than yeah, a boy. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would have been fun. Back and they have the baby. They have the announce. Oh, she had the baby! Yay! And it turns out they decide not to have the feast that they're going to have. They they're having the feast on Christmas Day, and I'm like, man. So did they just? What did they eat? <laughs> those people there christmas eve but anyway um, what's that uh, uh what did they eat on christmas eve uh, yeah oh that's they, true they held the the whole feast over uh they they i wonder what they 
they ate on Christmas Eve. <laughs> they were so hungry. Yeah, they were just eating gruel or something. I don't know. But um, uh, so yeah, so they're gonna try and have the feast again. Uh, Mrs. McCutcheon is still being a pill, and <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Gowan makes a wish that, that was so sweet. Millie will someday be able to read to him, and that was read the book to him and that was so cute and the world wept and then she does she reads it to him and it was like boom it was so exciting it was so cute her little voice is so cute yeah and i guess the reason why she was attached to gowan was because gowan looked like her father Mm -hmm. and so that was so cute and uh yeah Gowan adopts Millie and Charlotte. Yeah. What would you think I, about that, Amber? I would be fine for that. I was c- calling for that. Yeah. Finally, now that she doesn't need how to learn sign language, Miss McCutcheon is like, Thank okay. Goodness. So I'll sign her over. And uh, then uh, the you see Elizabeth in her house with her with their baby and she's talking to the baby about jack which i thought was so sweet so sweet yeah so adorable and then abigail comes in and she is elizabeth thanks abigail for helping her and and then says to her that i uh, i always imagined it would be wonderful but not you know this wonderful and so that's I thought that was really just the epitome of what when when calls the heart is mm-hmm. was those scenes. Would you agree, Amber? Yeah, I yeah. agree. They were great together. It was it was awesome. It was so sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then we get the orphans opening their presents, and that's when we find out that Opal has given Brownie the Millie, oh. and. <laughs> <laughs> all of hallmark wept <laughs> <laughs> little opals growing up yeah yeah and we see claire's dress which like i said i thought was really cool and fun and we get to see them going to the uh getting ready to go to the play so the ballet so there you go that's it that was the the christmas special and i really liked it i thought it like i said i watched it twice i thought it was just really like warm-hearted and sweet and they packed so much story i was never bored Mm -hmm. um watching this i thought that all the characters had nice moments i thought they did a good job uh of dealing with the jack thing in a sweet and tact tactful way that wasn't overbearing or heavy-handed i thought it had moments of fun i liked pretty much all the subplots i thought the whole millie uh the orphan things and and henry gowan and i liked clara and and jesse and the the ballet things i like uh even things like the salami were fun and i i just really enjoyed it i was like wow this is one of the best things the hallmarks produced this year agree opinion well awesome so we will look forward to the new season starting in february and uh we hope to have some good interviews and uh to to dive into the to the new season uh we did get to talk to uh, andrew brooks and that uh was on monday that interview so uh, if you want to hear her thoughts uh check that out and uh, and also the interview with ava uh from last week <laughs> uh, check that out uh links in the description if you want to uh listen to any of our when calls the heart content you can uh take a look at that and uh so there you go we will have this week i uh, uh our recap of this weekend's five movies this last weekend we will be talking to the podcasting girls from all the fields podcast on and we were talking with them on thursday it will air on friday and so that should be really really fun uh so something to look forward to it's like a podcasting uh <laughs> i can't think of dynamic duo thing it's gonna be really fun and uh, and then yeah next week we are also going to have 
our recap of the uh of the midnight kiss uh new year's eve movie and we are doing our Winterfest preview with Greg McBride. Look forward to that. The Hall Remark is going to be on that one as well. So lots of fun stuff coming up on the podcast. And so, yeah, let us know what you thought of this movie. Did you like it? How did it rank for you in the other One Calls the Heart movies? And Caroline, thank you so much. Like, thank you all for asking me. Amazing. You had we were just like a, a trove of knowledge. <laughs> great. So thank you so much. Thank you all. Yeah, this is so, we'll definitely have you on again. You were very yes. great. This is so much fun. Uh, how can people follow you on uh, social media and, and all that fun stuff? On Twitter, it's at Nita Caroline R. And on Instagram, it's MC Richardson 3 underscore. Great. And Amber, how can people find you? As always, I'm at Amber Brainways on Twitter, and that's it. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews on iTunes and on YouTube. So check that out. Make sure you're following the podcast all over social media and on iTunes, YouTube. If you can put in your reviews on iTunes and ratings, it really helps us out. Really appreciate it. And thanks again, Caroline. This was so much fun. Thank y'all. All right. We'll talk to you all later. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye, everybody.